Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Bandai's missile set for VF1 accessory for their DX line of VF1 toys. This item was released in May 2019 for 3,996 yen inclusive of tax as a Tamashi Web exclusive. So if you didn't buy one already, you're going to need to check the secondary market to grab them. If you're shopping for Robotech, Transformers, or just about anything else made of plastic, head on over to Big Bad Toy Store through the link in the comments below and you'll help this channel out while having some fun shopping a huge selection. As with previous Tamashi exclusive items, the missile set comes in a brown shipper box. Inside that shipper box, you'll find something more like a retail box. Though some previous web exclusive boxes have looked pretty simple, this one looks good enough to be a regular retail box. Inside, you'll find a plastic tray containing 12 TV style missiles. They're called AMM 1 guided multi purpose missiles. There are four AMM 1 pylons and racks, and I apologize, I think fighter jets are cool, but I might be butchering the terminology here. Next are six reaction missiles, they're called RMS-1 anti-ship missiles, and they come with the Do You Remember Love style yellow tips. You also get two dual reaction weapon pylons and racks, and two single reaction weapon pylons. Finally, there are four Do You Remember Love style missile pods, known as UUM-7 micro missile pods. Behind the plastic tray, you'll find instructions. There's no VF-1 included with this package, no additional pilot figures, no ground crew diorama, just enough missiles to arm three different VF-1 toys. The missiles come individually and can be mounted to a rack before being installed on the toy. The TV-style AMM-1 missiles and individual RMS-1 missiles function the same as they did on either the Yamato 148 scale line or Yamato's 160 version 2 toys. The dual mount reaction missiles feature a more line art accurate rack that allows the missile to connect to the sides rather than above. Make sure you have the reaction missile warning in the right direction. This might not be realistic, but it looks nice. All of the missiles attach very firmly to the rack so it won't be easy to pull them off and pretend like you're firing at bogeys, but they also won't inadvertently come loose on you. The DX VF1 is 148 scale. You can see these missiles are generally a hair smaller than their Yamato 148 scale counterparts. Yamato did some fine tuning when they made their 160 version 2 toys, so here's a comparison where I've made all the toys the same size. There are two things that stand out in this comparison. First, the missiles are much tighter to the wing. Some people won't like that, but it does have a benefit I'll discuss later. Second, the leading edge of the DX pylons are much more aerodynamic. As we move on to the Do You Remember Love style missiles, the DX pod is again tighter to the wing, but otherwise has the nice shape of the Yamato version 2 pod, but without the interconnection of the white dots on the front edge. Looking closer at the pods, they have a nice three-tone finish that makes them pop a bit more than their predecessors. The Yamato 148 scale pod has a nice vent detail on the side of it, but I'm not sure if it's accurate. All of the DX weapons have the type painted on, which is a nice touch and fits well with the abundance of paintwork Bandai applied to the VF-1 toy. Moving on to the RMS-1 missiles, you can see how much better that side mount looks on the dual missile set. You can also see that Bandai ditched the red stripe at the tip of the missile. I think this is a stake truer to the animation where in the movie, the missiles are generally solid yellow on top. What's unfortunate is that in the TV show, the missiles were red on top and Bandai didn't give us swap out red tips, despite the fact that the only release to date was Hikaru's VF-1J from the TV show. Installation of the missiles is a breeze. They just, this is what the attachment looks like. You just peg it right onto the hard point. It'll pivot like it's supposed to, but it won't droop and it won't fall off inadvertently. It's on there pretty firmly. Same thing with the UUM-7s, just pop them on, they will pivot, they do not droop, they do not fall off, they do not rock as you handle the toy. Nice and sturdy, and then finally, here is the TV-style missiles. Plug right on, fits, secure. If I bring the wings back, I can go ahead and just twist each of these individually, and I don't have any problem with any of the missiles trying to pop off on me. The first hard point on the DX toy is far enough out where in gear walk mode, it's really not gonna inhibit your fun. Even if you have the larger Do You Remember Love style missiles on there, you still have the ability to put that shoulder in almost every direction that you could do it when you didn't have any missiles at all on there. So gear walk mode, still gonna be a lot of fun no matter what missile selection you make. 
So yeah, in fighter mode, those missiles sitting up pretty high on the wing might bother some people. But when you get to Batroid mode, there's a pretty cool little benefit from that. And that is with the TV style missiles, at least, you can go ahead and close the wings in Batroid mode with the missiles attached, which isn't something you can do very often with the VF-1 toys. Now they do have, they extend past the end of the wing, so they're not gonna close all the way. You're gonna leave like a little gap in the wings, but it still looks pretty darn cool just the same. If you wanna use a display stand or the UUM-7 missiles, you are not gonna be able to close the wings up. The display stand comes in behind and would block things. The UUM-7 missiles are just way too wide to come back. But what you can do is remove the UUM-7s, have a full loadout of RMS-1s, and they are a bigger missile than the TV-style missile, as we've already seen in this review. So it's not gonna work out as well, but I do wanna show you kind of what it does look like. So I can put those on there. I can adjust my waist so I don't have the leg in the way. Bring these back, it's gonna be a little tricky to get them to fit, but they will come back. And you're just gonna have a much bigger gap with the wings because those are much longer missiles. So that's what you're in for if you wanna use the RMS. Not as good a fit as the TV style missiles and the UUM-7s just aren't gonna work at all. I am not a big fan of Bandai's decision to sell these missiles separately. I think it was particularly awkward the way they did things, but I'll elaborate more on that in my text article on Moon. As far as the missiles are concerned, they're pretty good. For nearly 4,000 yen, it really seems like some ground crew figures should be included, maybe some red missile tips, and maybe even a gimmick in the missile racks to have them collapse better so they'd work better in Batroid mode. Hopefully now you know all you need to know about this set so you can determine how much you'd be willing to pay for them. I know people are going to be curious what other toys these missiles will work with, so I'll start testing that out and put a list up on anymoon.com. Be sure to check that article out, subscribe to this channel, and hit that like button if you feel better informed. Thanks for watching.